On Sunday the 2nd of March, Russia invaded its neighbour Ukraine, seizing control of the Crimea Peninsula when the majority of Ukrainians are Russian speakers and where some of the population has been calling for the region to secede from Ukraine. Events since then have been moving incredibly fast and we don't know about you but we're having a little trouble trying to keep up. So we thought we'd give you another update on what's been going on in the past 24 hours. Today, Russia remains fully in control of Crimea and, according to Ukraine at least, has now deployed as many as 16,000 of its troops to the region. Early this morning, two Russian warships could be seen passing through Turkey's Bosphorus waters on their way to the Crimean port of Sevastopol, the city where Moscow has long had a naval base. According to Ukraine, Russia's Black Sea Fleet has trapped Ukrainian Navy vessels in the city and yesterday it was being reported by Russia's Interfax news agency to have given Ukrainian forces an ultimatum. Surrender by 5am local time on Tuesday, i.e. today, or face military action. Well, this deadline passed without any incidents, however, and a conflicting report from Interfax quoted a Russian official as saying the ultimatum was absolute nonsense. Things began to heat up later this morning, however, when Russian forces fired shots for the first time. When around 200 unarmed Ukrainian soldiers began marching towards Russian forces who were guarding the Belbek military airport near to Sevastopol, the Russian forces fired warning shots in response. After a bit of a standoff, however, the Ukrainian soldiers returned to their barracks and bizarrely began a game of football. We also thought it was interesting to note that since last Wednesday, the Russian military has been conducting so-called exercises in western and central parts of Russia, areas that board Ukraine. Today, however, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, ordered these troops to return to base, with his spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, saying the exercises had been a success. However, Russia denies that these exercises had anything to do with the situation in Crimea. So that's what's been going on on the ground, but what's been going on in the War of Words? Well, late last night, Russia was continuing to defend its actions, saying that the Ukraine's ousted leader, Viktor Yanukovych, remained the country's legitimate president and that he had asked for Russian military intervention in order to restore law and order. And at a news conference earlier today, Putin continued with these claims, saying that there had been an unconstitutional coup in Ukraine and that Russia reserved the right to use all options at its disposal to protect Ukrainian citizens including in eastern areas of Ukraine also. However, Putin also said that Russia saw no need to use military force in any part of Ukraine for the time being. And as we were making this video, Russia was beginning high-level talks with ministers from the new Ukrainian government. The European Union, meanwhile, is continuing to call on Russia to pull all of its troops back to bases. And then there's the United States, which is continuing to prepare potential sanctions for Russia apparently to be rolled out within days, not weeks, and seemingly without the support of the EU. John Kerry, the US's Secretary of State, flew into the Ukrainian capital Kiev today and shortly after landing, announced an economic package and technical assistance for Ukraine in a show of support for the new government. And in other related news, Abby Martin, a presenter on the American version of the news channel Russia Today, was being reported to have gone rogue last night after ending her breaking the set show with these words. I can't stress enough how strongly I am against any state intervention in a sovereign nation's affairs. What Russia did is wrong. You can watch a full clip of what Ms Martin said by clicking on the link appearing on the screen now. Well, that's it for today, but we'll try and keep you as updated on the situation in Ukraine as we possibly can. As always, let us know what you think in the comments below, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.